In this video, I want to show how the chapter topics in the Philosophy of Freedom came about. I'm referring to the edition of the Philosophy of Freedom, available only at philosophyoffreedom.com, that has topic headings in each chapter. The book is highly structured, so each topic has its one and only place in the chapter, as indicated here by Steiner. For in the case of a book like this, the important thing is so to organize the thoughts it contains that they take effect. With many other books, it doesn't make a great deal of difference if one shifts the sequence, putting this thing first and that later. But in the case of the philosophy of freedom, that is impossible. It would be just as unthinkable to put page 150 50 pages earlier as it would be to put a dog's hind legs where the front ones belong. Okay, what is the underlying thought structure of the philosophy of freedom that determines this special sequence of the topics? This thought structure is found in Rudolf Steiner's World Outlook Diagram from his Human and Cosmic Thought Lectures. The mind can grasp truth from 12 different perspectives. The World Outlook Diagram places the 12 possible worldviews in a special order to indicate how they relate to each other. There are four major views placed at four corners. The other views are transitions between two of the main views. So between materialism and idealism are transitions to mathematism and rationalism. It is the same for the other views, which are transitions between two of the main views. Each chapter begins with an introduction to the chapter theme and then discusses that theme from 12 different perspectives as though each were a photograph of one and the same object taken from many different angles. My philosophy of freedom presents the wide range of human standpoints, often masquerading under such strange philosophical names in a way that leaves the reader free of attachment to any particular approach and able to let the various concepts speak for themselves, as though each were a photograph of one and the same object taken from many different angles. If we place 12 topics on the worldview diagram, it looks like this. We have four main topics, topics one through four at the corners. Then topic five and topic six are transitions between main topic one and main topic four. In the same way, the other topics are transitions between two different main topics. Now let's look at a few specific chapter main topics. In chapter one, Conscious Human Action, the first four topics discuss the four main elements of an act of will. Action, the agent or I, the nature or character of a person, and the motive. This would mean that topic five and six would be transitions between action and motive. Topic seven and eight would be transitions between motive and I, and so on. This will be the structure that determines the topics for each chapter. Here are the four main topics of chapter two, the desire for knowledge. The main elements of desired knowledge is materialism, spiritualism, realism, and idealism. In chapter three on thinking, the four main elements of thinking are observation, the I as active, contemplation of an object, and contemplation of thought. So you can see why each topic in the philosophy of freedom has to be what it is, where it is, and in a certain sequential order.